Sometimes researching historic figures is quick and easy. The individual is well documented and easy to trace. There's a census record every 10 years, marriage documentation, birth records for them, and their children. They never change their name, never move. You're confident each record refers to the same person. And then there's other times. The individual has a common name, has changed names, moved around, lived somewhere documentation was poor. This video will examine one of those times. The purpose of this video is to give you the confidence to keep going even when things don't immediately click. Sometimes more digging will uncover connections that give a fuller picture. In the summer of 2020, I was helping the WestCon Archive prepare for a class which would examine the Truman Warner papers. Truman Warner was a medic during World War II, and he wrote home frequently. His over 400 letters are transcribed and available online. One person Warner mentions is Mr. Treadwell. Mr. Treadwell was on the Danbury Draft Board, and there seems to have been some drama between the Treadwells and Warner's family. I wanted to learn more about Treadwell and his history, and so I went to the Ancestry database. Once in Ancestry, I searched for Treadwell. The 1944 Danbury City Directory gives me several potential Mr. Treadwells, but I'm pretty confident my man is Joseph A. Treadwell because he is listed as the Chairman of the Selective Service Local Board, also known as the Draft Board. I learn he's also a salesman. It looks like he lives alone. Using his newfound first name, I find a draft registration card. I'm pretty sure this is the same Joseph Treadwell because the addresses match. It's possible that Joseph is a family name, in which case Joseph might have a son Joseph or a grandparent, which is something to watch out for. I now have a birth date. Something else interesting about the draft card is the signature. He shortens Joseph to Jos. This birth date and signature mean that I can be more confident that the World War I draft card I find is for the same Joseph Treadwell. The card lists him as being born in Danbury, but currently living in Indianapolis, Indiana, and working in Kansas and Missouri. He sure gets around. He's also listed as having a wife, but we don't have her name. Further searching reveals an application for a military headstone for a Joseph Arthur Treadwell, born July 24, 1887. Other sources list his birthday as the 25th, but maybe there was a mistake somewhere. This man served in World War I from Indiana and was buried in Worcester Cemetery in Danbury, a few blocks from Westcon. George May is listed as a close friend requesting the marker. I'm not sure who he is. We now have a death date. February 8th, 1960. This means we can look for his obituary. Since he's buried in Danbury, the News Times is a good place to start. Those papers are available on microfilm in the Haas Library. Unfortunately, I'm currently working from home, so I won't be able to check for a few days. In the meantime, I keep looking through digital records. I check to see if he's listed in Worcester Cemetery's Find a Grave page. He's not listed, which isn't unusual for Worcester Cemetery. Worcester Cemetery is a huge place, and not all of the memorials are listed in Find a Grave. I'm pretty sure he's buried there, though, so I contact the cemetery to find out if they have a burial record. They do, and send, they send me a copy. They also send over the plot record, which shows who purchased the burial plot and who else is buried there. Joseph Treadwell was buried in his mom's parents' burial plot. The only other Treadwell is Lilith Wills Treadwell. She was born in 1897 so she is probably not Joseph Treadwell's daughter. She could be his wife, but her burial card doesn't say either way. I also find the question mark after her mother's name curious. Were they not sure? I look for his 1920 census record, but I don't find it. I do find him in the 1930 census. 
He is listed with his wife, Lilith. It's nice to have confirmation of suspicions. Also, note that his age at first marriage is listed as 31. His age in 1930 is 42. Her age at first marriage is 23, and she's currently 34. So, their first marriages were both 11 years ago, in about 1919, presumably to each other. So far, everything has been straightforward. It's when I start digging into his marriages that Mr. Treadwell gets complicated. So, I go back to Ancestry and do another search. I find two marriages for Joseph A. Treadwell. One is to Maud Foof in Indiana in 1909. The other is to Willa Lawrence in Missouri in 1917. Neither of these people is Lilith. Clicking into the Indiana marriage isn't very informative. The birth date and the name line up, but who is Maud Foof? I search for Maud Foof in Ancestry, limited to Indiana. This turns up the marriage index record I saw earlier. It also shows several entries for Maud Fife. I can imagine a why looking like a you, so that sort of transcription error makes sense to me. I'm not really finding anything too conclusive here, so I look up where I can find Montgomery, Indiana marriage records. The Family Search Wiki points me in the direction of the Crawfordsville District Public Library Hit Local History website, where I can do a search for marriages. And we have two results. From the page numbers, it looks like this is two pages of the same document. Clicking through, we have a lot of information. This is definitely our Mr. Treadwell. Born in Danbury, Connecticut, 1887. Parents line up. He's currently living in Detroit, Michigan and working as a salesman. This is his first marriage. His bride is Maud Fife. Born 1891 to Thornton Fife and Jenny Dooley. She's a minister's daughter, and they were married in 1909. Since Joseph and Lilith were married in 1919, I look to see how and when his marriage to Maud ended. I find them living together in the 1910 census, and a book mentions Joseph starting a mittens company in Crawfordsville, Indiana in 1911. Other than that, nothing. I do find a death record for Maud. She died in 1982. Her name is listed as Maud Louise Norvell because she remarried. I'm confident this is the same woman because she has the same parents and same birth year as the Maud who married Joseph. Maybe if I can find when she remarried, that would shed light on when she and Joseph separated. So, another search on Ancestry. I'm not sure what her new husband's name is, but his last name was Norvell. I find an entry in Find a Grave where her husband is listed as Max William Norvell. And I go down a rabbit hill of searching for when she remarried. I find she might have married two other men before Max Norvell. I like how the November 1917 date for her marriage to Walter Fast lines up neatly with Joseph Treadwell's 1917 marriage to Willa Lawrence. Let's look closer at Joseph's marriage to Willa. According to this, Willa Lawrence is from Crawfordsville, Indiana, and Joseph Treadwell is from Jackson, Missouri. This is interesting because Joseph used to live in Crawfordsville with his first wife, Maud. I guess he left Maud moved to Missouri and brought Willow with him? At this point, I feel inspired to go back to the Crawfordsville District Public Library local history search. I do a search in the Vitals database, which I'd missed earlier, and I'm pleasantly surprised. This all makes sense. Joseph married Maud in 1909, then they divorced in 1914. Joseph married Willa in 1917, and she died nine months later in November. 
Then Treadwell married Lilith in 1919. At this point, I get a chance to search the News Times microfilm for obituaries. I'm in luck, and there's a good obituary about Mr. Treadwell in the News Times. We learn he traveled through the Midwest and then returned to Danbury in 1920. There's no mention of a wife. Lilith's obituary is also in the Danbury News Times. It's not that great an obituary in his... It doesn't really tell us much about her. It's mostly about her husband. So I take a walk over to Worcester Cemetery, and I use the plot card and plot map to find Section H, Plot 19. Worcester Cemetery is huge, but well organized, and the plot map makes finding burials simple. I find Joseph buried next to Lilith. I also add them both to find a grave, so they're easier for the next person to research. At this point, I feel like I've exhausted all of my routes of research, but I feel confident that I've built a much fuller picture of Mr. Treadwell and his wives. To be honest, for much of this, I thought Mr. Treadwell was a bigamist, and I was pleasantly surprised to find those divorce records. I hope this presentation on the twists and turns of researching a historic figure helps you have the confidence to keep digging, even when things don't make sense. Sometimes you uncover something that makes it all click. And remember, feel free to email us at the WCSU archives if you need any help with your research.